This is Twit. Hi, my name is Victor from Twit, and today I will be reviewing the Sony DSC QX10 smartphone attachable lens style camera. Now, this may look like it's just a lens, but within this small form factor is a complete point and shoot camera. What you won't find on this camera is an LCD screen because what it does is it pairs with your smartphone or mobile device by Wi-Fi to be able to see what you're shooting. But before we get into how that works, let's go into some of the hardware features. It has a Sony G lens with a 10 times optical zoom, connects to an iOS or Android device by Wi-Fi. You can even use NFC. It can shoot 1080p video at 30 frames per second. A rechargeable battery pack rated at 200 images. It charges by micro USB and takes micro SD and memory stick micro cards. You can technically operate the camera without pairing it to any mobile device by pressing the shutter button and there are even physical zoom rockers. There is a tiny display showing battery life as well. When you take a picture or take a video, even when you're using your smartphone to preview, it is saving the full res image to the internal memory card in the camera. For remote operation or to switch to video mode, you do need to download the Sony Play Memories app on the iOS or Google Play app stores. The app gives you the basic controls like zoom, shutter, and has three preset modes, program mode and two auto modes. With program mode, you can adjust aperture and ISO settings and touch an area to adjust focus. The first time operating using the app is an exercise in frustration. Clipping the QX10 to a smartphone and trying to use it like a point-and-shoot camera is very hard to do in normal settings such as a party because the startup time of the app and connecting to the camera makes it hard to shoot on a whim. The lag time when you're getting an image once pressing the shutter on screen, it takes what seems like seconds to find focus and take a picture. By the time the shutter clicks, people have stopped smiling and have already started moving on their way. So if you're getting this for a special event, like the next day, I would give it a week or so in advance to get used to the lag and get the timing right to take pictures. Sometimes while shooting the video, the Wi-Fi would disconnect and the QX10 would still be filming. Even when you reconnect, the only way I've found to stop the QX10 from filming is to press the power button on the camera. The final image is usually much better than the preview, but will throw you off when you're initially using the camera. With the app, you can also transfer pictures from the memory card and the camera to your mobile device for sharing, although it transfers a lower res preview over Wi-Fi. To get the full res photos, you will have to take the memory card out of the camera and transfer using your computer. Interesting note, even though the camera is connected to your smartphone, the photo apparently does not save GPS location data, which may be a reason to, for some to get a Wi-Fi connected camera. You may think after hearing all that, that there's nothing really good to say about this camera, but as a camera, I have to say that when you have good lighting, the pictures and the video actually look really good. Much better than the smartphone camera, even on par with many low to mid-range point-and-shoot cameras. In low light or indoors, a steady hand is needed to take sharp pictures because the camera will take longer to focus and shutter. Also, another thing to consider is that there is no flash. So the pros for the QX10? The picture and video resolution actually look really good for this camera at this price point. The remote operation, tripod mount, using standards like micro SD and micro USB charging, and the replaceable battery. For the cons, the Wi-Fi lag is inconsistent and can be pretty frustrating. There's long startup time. The lighting on your device's screen is not a good indication of the final photo. Especially in low light situations, the handheld shots can be blurry. Battery life is something you also have to be aware of because it will be using Wi-Fi and you will be draining both the camera's battery and the mobile device. For me, this would fall on the specialized application category like the sports cameras such as the GoPros. What you do get over the sports cameras is an image without the fisheye distortion and an optical zoom. I get the best results from leaving the camera on a tripod and remotely using a mobile device. If you do need to go handheld, it was more reliable to get a good picture using the shutter on the camera as opposed to the LCD screen. Seeing how the remote features have some quirks to still work out, I'm gonna have to give this a don't buy. I am, however, excited to see what Sony's gonna do with the second generation of these, if they come out with a second generation of these. Um, I would love to see 
a small LCD screen so that you can see the images immediately um, while carrying around this camera. I'm Victor from Twit, and this was my review of the Sony DSC QX10.